After the next 15 minutes, you'll be ready to take the first step to accomplishing your next big goal in life. And that's starting. My name is Seth and I'm an entrepreneur. I've had the incredible opportunity to co-found four startups while at Georgia Tech, have helped clients raise over $2 million in funding, and even got the opportunity to audition to pitch on Shark Tank. But I was this close to giving up because I really didn't think I had what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Three years ago, I was working as a stress engineer at my co-op, and I really didn't love what I was doing. But, and I'm sure you haven't heard this before, I had a revolutionary app idea that was going to change the world. <laughs> That's right, my app was going to send people sounds. Just like Snapchat, except instead of pictures, we're gonna send sounds. What could possibly go wrong with that? Well, it turns, about, turns out literally everything. You see, I had no idea how to code, didn't know how to start my own company, I knew nothing. So I started planning. I started reading Forbes articles, and it turns out they're all extremely generic and really don't help you. I started reading books, and I had this massive 200-page Microsoft Word document outlining exactly how my plan would look, how people would interact with it, how we are going to market it. And after six months of planning, I finally started coding. I brought together a team. Within the first week, we made zero progress. Just nothing. We were thinking, no, there's a setback. Everyone has setbacks. We went another week. After the second week, we just didn't have the technical knowledge. By the third week, when I asked some friends, it turns out that you actually have to have a Mac in order to code iPhone apps, and I still had a Windows laptop. So when I was told that, I knew that I definitely did not have what it takes to make my own app. And that was really tough, because if you've ever spent half a year planning something, you want it to be incredible, right? And it just kind of tore me apart. But I learned a really important lesson, and that's that the quickest way to learn is by failing. You'll never get to the next level if you're always sitting on the sidelines reading the playbook. Imagine LeBron James squatting down watching basketball on TV all day. Do you think that's how he got to be such a legend? No, he got out there and he started playing. You see, you have to start. And you have to start before you're ready. The reason it's so important you start before you're ready is because a plan can't fail. A plan is just a piece of paper. It can't fail. You see, during this honeymoon idea phase that I had, my plan looked amazing. According to my plan, I should be a millionaire right now. <laughs> According to my plan, we were going to get tens of billions of users by 2020. Even though there are only 7 billion people on Earth, we were going to do it because our plan said so. <laughs> but in many regards, planning is procrastinating sometimes. For me, planning was this shield from the inevitable failure that happens to all of us when you try something new for the first time. But the only thing worse than starting with a failure is failing to start. Now, luckily, four months later, I had a new opportunity. I got a phone call from a professor who taught a journalism and marketing class. And thank goodness she didn't look at the app that I was trying to build, because she'd see that it wasn't anywhere. Uh, but she told me that she had this app idea, and she wanted me to help her make it. Now, I really wanted to tell her yes, I did. I wanted to say, yes, I'll make your dreams come true. But let's take a step back and review. I tried to form a company, did not work. Tried to form a team, they all left. I don't know how to code. I don't know what the server thing that you speak of is. And her app is about marketing and I'm studying mechanical engineering. So yeah, I say this doesn't look so great on paper. But then again, my first idea looked amazing on paper and it was a complete flop. Now, the only thing harder than starting is restarting. Because when you restart, you've already hit rock bottom, you know you've failed, and you have to get the courage to get back up there and try again, knowing you'll probably fail again. But I had this deep drive inside, this burning desire to actually do something meaningful with my life. I wanted to make a dent in the world somewhere. And I knew that with new challenges would come new opportunities. So I told her yes. And unlike last time, I spent one day planning instead of six months. And I started coding right away. I spent up long nights coding. Stack Overflow became my best friend. Google became my best friend. And in just four weeks, 
I had actually coded my first iPhone app. Now, if you know anything about Apple, there's a pretty thorough process of submitting it to the App Store. I see some of you nodding your heads. It's a painful process. So I submitted the app not once. It got rejected not twice, but seven times it got rejected from Apple. But finally, on the eighth time, this beautiful blue button lit up on the screen that said Release to App Store. And I clicked it, and it was the greatest moment ever. Within the first three days, we had 400 downloads. Now, yes, all of the students in her classes were required to download it. <laughs> but still, this was an incredible accomplishment because now I knew that I could do this. So I now have this new product, and I wanted to share it with others. So I applied to pitch competitions all over. And this is probably where that saying comes in where you better be careful what you wish for because it just might come true. Because <laughs> the next day I got a call from a man named Jamie Turner. He's an internationally recognized marketing expert and speaker. And he said, Seth, I got your application. I'd love to have you come pitch as one of the five teams at our Mobile X Festival. It's a conference focused on mobile marketing innovation in Atlanta. I was like, and here I am at my lunch break during my co-op, and I'm like, great, wh when is it? He's like, next week. So here I am, I'm, I'm like, oh, you know, start before you're ready. He was like, yeah, sure, we'll do it. <laughs> so I go back after work to my team, and I said, I told them about the opportunity. They're like, you told him no, right? I said, no, guys, we got to get out there. We got to try it. I told him yes. Because just like the Georgia Tech football team on fourth down, <laughs> you got to go for it. So here we are the day of the event, Mobile X Festival, and I walk into the room and there's like a hundred people, and not just everyday people, these are business executives from big companies, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, right in front of me is the VP of Marketing from Coca-Cola. That's pretty intimidating. So I'm sitting here, and each pitch is strictly limited to exactly three minutes. There's a big timer, and Jamie starts yelling at you if you go over, so you don't want to go over. So I'm waiting, and we are randomly selected to be the fifth team to pitch. So the first team goes by, it's three minutes. The second team, by the time it's like at the third or fourth, it seems like I've been sitting there for hours. My palms are all sweaty, and now these thoughts are racing through my head. Like, am I just going to go up there and embarrass myself in front of all these people? Am I going to make a fool of myself and ruin my dreams of becoming an entrepreneur? So before I had a chance to like duck out or make any excuse, Jamie was like, all right, your turn. So, so here I go, come up. And those three minutes went by like that. It was the fastest thing ever. And right after the three minutes were done, I was thinking, great, I'm done, but nope. Right after those three minutes, I started getting slammed with questions from investors. They asked things like, do you have a recurring revenue model? And what's your unique selling value proposition? What's your cost of value? All these things that I have no idea what they mean. And you know that feeling where you give a presentation in class, and right after you're done, the professor starts asking you these questions, and you have no idea the answers, but you're just kind of smiling and trying to pretend to fake it. Yeah, I felt like that the whole time. But finally it was done and the questions ended and I knew it didn't go so well. I kind of trudged back to my seat. I was thinking, oh, you know, start before you're ready. Maybe next year. So I started packing up. I was thinking about where I was going to go for lunch. And all of a sudden Jamie looks over to me. He says, Seth, you're going to come up? I was very confused. I'm thinking, what, is it like a participation picture or something? He says, come on, Georgia Tech students, you guys won. It's like. We won? So here we are, completely confused. We're rushed up. They're shoving us like random t-shirts and rewards and all these things, taking pictures. Our faces hurt so much from smiling the whole time. And Jamie came up to me and he said, Seth, do you, do you know why you won? I was like, no, please, please do tell. He said, you won the audience because of your passion and enthusiasm. Because you have so much energy and it's so obvious you care about what you're doing. No amount of planning or reading would tell you that passion and enthusiasm would win a pitch competition, no. Books would say that investors choose a team that has a proven ability to execute, or you know, big and bold and innovative ideas, but not energy. But until, until you get out there and try, you don't know what you don't know. As college students, we often gravitate towards comfortable, familiar, easy paths, right? We don't want to end up in an awkward situation or something. And so we stick to the things that we know we're already good at instead of maybe exploring new opportunities. But we have to reverse this perspective, this mindset that failure is such a bad thing and embrace the beauty that the more ways you can fail, 
the more ways you can learn. My theory is that we spend so much time trying to craft this perfect plan because we want to nail it the first time. We want to be successful in our first attempt and look like we are always meant to do this. But success doesn't work like that. Success is not a one-time event, a single occurrence where it just happens and it's done. Success is taking small steps outside of your comfort zone, learning from these experiences to reach a bigger challenge and conquer a bigger goal. I want you to think about your big goal in life. Maybe it's becoming a photographer. Perhaps it's mastering a new language. Or maybe you want to launch your own startup. Now, imagine yourself 30 years in the future, looking back at that goal you had. Think about why that goal is so important to you. And imagine how incredible achieving that will feel. I want you to ask yourself, would you rather live a life that's happy and easy, one where you're always emotionally comfortable, where you always know what's going to happen next? Or do you seek a different kind of challenge, one that constantly is pushing your limits, pushing you to the edge of your comfort zone? Your life's greatest adventures are waiting for you right outside that door, and I know you're going to do incredible things. So do yourself a favor, and get out there, get excited, and start before you're ready. Thank you.